So we're just north of Bowling Green that started to rain real hard. And uh, this car got really squirrely and I even have enough pressure in the tires that it shouldn't have gotten as squirrely as it was. So I slowed down to like 45 miles per hour. I couldn't believe how squirrely the car was. I mean, it was worse than when it rains torrential, torrential rains in Florida. And uh, I think it has something to do with the way that this road is concaved, that it traps water. And um, right through here, and uh, you can see not even two miles from where my car got squirrely. You see this here, but she's okay. Oh, there's a Corvette involved. So, maybe he wasn't involved, maybe he just pulled over to help her out. Although I wouldn't be surprised if his car got squirrely and then she had to dodge him and she spun because he had the wider tires. I could be wrong though, but uh, all I know is this thing got real squirrely, like it got real spooky uh, what it did. I've never had to do that before in the rain, like what it just did. So anyway, um, let's see here, give me a second. video plan. I'm going to turn it down. All right, guys. Good morning. It's Brandon. So we spent the night in Bowling Green last night. We're lucky enough to get a hotel. I figured somebody probably left early and they canceled and they didn't take their hotel room. Sure enough, I was able to get a hotel right there next to the, uh, you know, the museum or whatever. So anyway, um, on our way north here, uh, let's see, what are we going to talk about? Let's do a recap of what we talked about with Taj last night. Because there's more than what I mentioned in those videos. So basically, um, I really want to emphasize this because there's a lot of uh, basically liars in the Facebook community and probably going to attack on YouTube as well, saying that I stalk Taj, all this stuff. No, I actually am happy for the guy. He did a fantastic job. Um, you know, this car, I've said it a million times, it's it's awesome but the problem that it has can kill you, okay? So I'm not saying that they didn't do an awesome job on the interior and an awesome job on the carbon fiber wheels and an awesome job on the engine, okay? But the flaw that it has can get us killed. So we have two choices, guys. We can either roll over and, and play dead and let the car kill us, okay? Or we can try to get the problem solved. So let's try to get the problem solved, right? Now I'll be the first to admit, I realize that I think the problem is much more difficult to solve and I think that General Motors is well aware of it. In fact, I know that they're well aware of it because as I've said before, there have been insiders from General Motors who have approached me and uh, we're going to get into this now. So that's what I explained to Taj last night very kindly and he basically, first question out of his mouth was, uh, on what forum did they approach you? And you might think that that's a harmless question for me to answer. General Motors is very powerful. They can uh, subpoena these forums and say, hey, we need to see who's been communicating with Brandon Byers from within our company on your forum, okay? And so, real long story short, I answered them, I'm on Facebook, okay? And so Facebook is more tricky for General Motors to uh, intervene in. There's another car in the ditch. Ooh, 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 I just got squirrely again, right there, right where that car wrecked, I got squirrely. So anyway, um, these roads are, are crazy. If you remember, a Chevy dude spun a C8 on the way to the museum, I think with his girl, in the rain. So anyway, um, these roads are sketch with water, like water flows. So anyway, um, okay, so back on point. So I said to Taj, I, I tried to keep it real positive. I said, listen, I said that, that there's people who are from the inside who I think intend to sue your company. Uh, they, they made it really clear to me. There's people on the outside who intend to sue your company. I didn't name anybody's names. I didn't name any departments, anything. I just said, there's people who know that there's an issue with the Z-Div glitch and they're ready to break their silence. And I think that the lesser of all evils is if you just make a mechanical diff variant of the Z06, even if you guys charge the moon for it, charge an extra hundred grand for it, I don't know if you guys realize it or not, but Maserati, the MC20, they just came out with a car called the uh, the GT2 Stradale, okay? Just got launched this week. And the GT2 Stradale has an e-diff with multiple maps. You can choose from them 
multiple different programs like the GT3 RS. If General Motors would offer us such a thing, okay, even if they are going to stay hung up on EDIFs, if they would offer us such a thing where you could dial back the EDIF intervention, okay, and have it where it's a more consistent program where it's just throttle dependent, that would be a solution. So I'm trying to give Taj like positive ideas, and, but I also made it very clear. I said, you guys are out of time. I said, we've been complaining about this for a while. I know that you know me from the NASA reveal event. We talked for 45 minutes. I was the guy who talked to you about the fuel pumps uh, and the cars going into limp mode. And I told you I was Lemon Law on C7Z06s. Um, you know, I'm on the groups every day on Facebook throwing a fit about this, giving you guys fair warning, barking real loud. And I said, but I'm not trying to ruin your night. I said, I really do genuinely appreciate all that you've done. I don't want this to undo your life's work. I said, I'm trying to solve the problem without you guys getting sued. Because once this gets brought to light, like really brought to light where it's like across CNN or something that there's a class action, you know, automo automotive weekly or whatever it is, that's when all the, the munchkins of Oz they go, they go from saying, Brandon, you don't know what you're talking about, to like going in, under, hiding under their covers and crying. Why is General Motors getting sued about this? I'm like, perfect car. How dare you, General Motors? Okay, so, um, you know, that's the mentality of the average weirdo Corvette owner at this point, it seems like. Even non-Corvette owner, just mentally delusional wannabes who want to pretend that they're a Corvette owner, who want to argue with me in these Facebook groups and YouTube videos, you know, all these wannabe weirdos. So anyway, um, so we had a good healthy chat and he's like, listen, oh my God, this thing just got squirrely again. I gotta slow down. This thing's really getting crazy. Now granted, I am down to 33, 32 PSI right now. Okay. But, um, to add some air, honestly, if it's going to continue to rain, which it probably is, we need to pull over and add air. So this is a good lesson. When you're driving a Corvette and you're in the rain or you're in the snow, you need to run about 35, 36 PSI to be safe. It completely changes the dynamic of the shape of the tire, completely night and day difference in handling of the car. So next stop, we're going to pull over and get some air because I've had three warnings now, four warnings, and uh, I'm running below the speed limit right now and the car is still getting really squirrely on me. So anyway, um, and, it's a, and it's a shame that General Motors doesn't talk about this. You know, sometimes there might be a higher power, uh, the, the coincidences that happen to me in my life and in these videos. Oh my God, this thing's really getting squirrely, guys. Like really squirrely. And I'm going 60. I got people flying by me. But anyway, um... The point is, General Motors has this overzealous EDIF program to try to prevent the cars from spinning. These kind of situations are probably the kind of situations where General Motors ordered their uh, ride handling and EDIF engineers. They need to fix the car so it doesn't spin. Now here's what's ironic. My EDIF is locked out to 2% right now. The car can spin very easily, okay? So here I am driving in a rainstorm. Now let's, let's do an experiment here. There is a setting on this car where you can put it into weather mode, right? Now we're in weather mode. Does General Motors increase the E-diff lockout in weather mode in the rain? The answer is no. So why is it General Motors that we're at 2% lockout going down the highway when my car is squirrely when I notified you that we're in weather mode, but that the E-diff program doesn't... It's, it's the same fucking E-diff program, guys. That's what it comes down to. It's, you guys don't have any variation to your E-diff program, and, it's, and that's a problem. And so you've got an overzealous EDIF program that we, the consumer, can't make overzealous when we need it to be overzealous. And instead it's overzealous at 130 miles per hour in a sweeping turn where the thing's trying to push us straight off the road when it's locking out past 60, 70, 80% lockout. After we learn the car down here at two and 3%, driving around at normal speeds thinking, oh, I got this, I understand this car now. No, you don't. The car changes as you go faster which I've explained in other videos, but we're just gonna remind everybody because we probably have a lot of people that are just tuning in now for the first time. And Justin deleted the other channel. He attacked the other, God damn it. And these fuckers are passing me as I'm, as I'm squirreling. 
I saw they had an exit yet. There's an exit coming up up here. Hopefully there's a gas station. The reason why I'm not over in the far slow lane, guys, is because the ruts are worse in the far slow lane, and that makes it so that the uh, water pools uh, from where the semis drove, they weighted the road down, caused the water rut, the tire ruts. This is actually a really important video we're making right now. It's like a kill three birds with one stone kind of video. Um, so anyway, um, so anyway, I ended up giving Taj the phone number. Now here's what I think General Motors is gonna do, because it's just predictable lawyer behavior. They're probably gonna instruct Taj, well, you don't work for the company anymore, therefore you have no obligation to have given us this phone number that he gave you last night, even though you gave Brandon your word. Because see, I asked Taj in, in, the, in the second video, I don't know if you can hear me or not, I said, or is there a phone number that I can reach out to someone at General Motors? And he says, no, we will reach out to you. So, Taj Juchter gave me his word that there is no one else for me to reach out to at General Motors, that he is going to pass it on, that someone else is going to reach out to me. So watch him say, oh, we lost your phone number. General Motors, it doesn't matter, guys, they're about to get sued. And you guys have no concept what's coming. You guys have no concept the organization that's occurred behind the scenes. What I did is, is polite and as courteous and forward thinking as anyone could ask for at General Motors. I've given you guys all the warning that we're angry about it. I've barked very loud. Last night I was very courteous to Taj. There were plenty of other people who recognized me. There's plenty of people now who've seen these videos who know what's going on that are inside General Motors. By the way, guys, I can tell which videos General Motors watches often because they get a lot of views. They, they get spread like wildfire behind the scenes. There's videos that I put up that are, I didn't even share on Facebook. They went, I'm not gonna say viral viral, but viral for my channel. Instead of them only having 50 views, they have 1,500 and 2,000 views, okay? So, okay, so we're gonna get off on this exit here and we're gonna add some air to the tire and then we'll do part two of this video, all right? And we'll see if the Corvette doesn't handle any better once we get it up to 35, 36 PSI in the rain. All right, guys. See ya. And then you can always just let the air back out later. You take the little, uh, you take the little uh, thing off the uh, tire cap, air cap, and you uh, use it to poke in there with the corner of it. You poke it in there and you let the air back out a little bit. And you got pressure gauges right on your car. So the difference between you being a safe motorist and not being a safe motorist is adding air pressure to your tires when you're in a Corvette. And understand something, the cold rain cools the tires down. So they're always going to contract. So even if you were running 35, 36 PSI before, look at this beautiful C1 coming. So anyway, what I was going to tell you is um, General Motors doesn't teach people this. And I've been begging for Conti to teach people this. I've been begging for Chuck to teach people this. I've been begging for everybody to teach people this. What I'm explaining right now about adding the air pressure to the tire and it'll keep you out of trouble in these cars. And instead of anybody want to teach it, what do we get? We get all these people on the groups who say, we don't want to listen to you because you're a douchebag. Okay, well, uh, to me, I think you guys are douchebags. There's people's lives on the line, and you guys can't differentiate between your egos that want to prove that I'm wrong about everything simply because I insulted you guys and said that you guys are the clueless ones. There's a lot of General Motors folks here today. Oh, there's another wrecked car. Those of you who think we're exaggerating about how bad the road is. We're just looking for an air pump. This gas station didn't even have one. Looking for an air pump and the gas station doesn't have one. So the next thing you got to do when you run into that is you look for a car wash. One of the do-it-yourself car washes, they'll have air pumps change machine sometimes. The problem is that is the only gas station at this exit. And 
and I really don't want to get back on the road because what this car did a couple times, I'll admit to you right now, it was luck that I saved it. I know when I'm in control of a car, I know when it's luck. What the car just did just now is scarier for me than when I'm driving 130 miles per hour on a turn in the dry. At 1.2 lateral G's or whatever it is I'm running. So anyway, that's, that's that video. Uh, see, Tad just, here, here's the inner dynamic at General Motors, guys. Tad just smart enough to know that I know what I'm talking about. Then you have all the executive people who don't really understand how machines work. They're just executive lawyer type people. They think that I'm full of shit. They're like, that guy's full of shit, isn't he, Taj? And Taj is like, well, you know, I, I. and uh, and so th there is the the situation. Is the best way I know how to explain it. The, the vast majority of people, at General Motors, are not smart enough to understand that they are about to get sued and fucking lose. Like, you, you guys are gonna lose. Like, you guys don't understand how easy it is for me to prove what's going on. I know. I know. When you ask Taj, he might tell you that I don't know. What I'm talking about because he doesn't want to make waves and tell you guys that you're the ones who are out of line. You guys are very out of line. You're about to get sued. This, this cars have issues. You guys don't teach people about the tire pressure. In fact, <clears throat> your owner's manual doesn't even say to run 35, 36 PSI in the tires. Your owner's manual says to run 30 to 32 or 31 to 33, which is too low. It's too low. And so Michelin on your tires, on these tires, these exact tires, Michelin has stated time and time again they need to be between uh, like 30, 34 to 36, I think is their official statement, that once the tire is up to temp, now understand what that means, what the term up to temp means. Up to temp means as high of a temperature as it's going to get in that setting. They're up to the final temperature of the day. So today's final up to temp is this, normal temperature is what up to temp is today because it's raining on a hot day it might say warm if you're doing like tail of the dragon and windy roads you can get them hot okay or you can get them ooh, yeah you can get them hot but, but the point is um right now this is up to temp this is all the hotter they're going to get so once you get them up to temp and what it's going to be for the day that's when you get the air okay let's see if we have a, a air pump here for those of you who are like, man, why don't you just get back on the highway? Blah, 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 blah. Because this is this is the reason why we have to have a stupid fucking EDIF program is because you guys don't have the fucking common sense and class because it is class. When you wreck your fucking car into somebody else, which back out there with that black Corvette guy I pulled over to help out, maybe he was just being a good Samaritan. Maybe he got a little squirrely and that girl wrecked as a result and he felt bad and he pulled over, okay? Could be. Corvettes are not good in the rain. They have wide tires, they don't weigh much. And instead of General Motors, give people advice. This town doesn't have a fucking air pump, guys. It's fucking unbelievable. The world that we live in and the fucking priorities. We have all these fucking fast food joints. It's probably because this is a self-sufficient town in the regard that you get a lot of people who probably have air pumps in their homes. The shitty thing is it's Sunday, so I can't pull into any automotive shop. I'm gonna see here if I can go over one street if there's any businesses over here. I don't think there are, I think it's all houses, but I just wanted to make sure I'm not missing something here. Alright, this looks like all houses to me. Anyway, that's enough for this video. I still haven't found an air pump yet, it's a big deal. It'd be nice, Taj, if you could teach people about this shit. Like, yeah, this is really big shit, okay? I get it that you guys have fine-tuned all the little things, but you guys are missing the elephants in the rooms, okay? These are big elephants, Taj, and you have a lot of power, and now it's not Taj anymore, it's Mr. Holder. You have a lot of power, Aaron Link. You have a lot of power. You guys are in charge now, Aaron Link, and uh, and uh, what's the other guy's name, uh, the new guy? I am drawing a blank, but the point is, you guys have a lot of power 
why don't you use it for good? This is a really big deal, guys. I know you guys are gonna see this video because it talks about General Motors getting sued. I know that this video is gonna get shared around inside General Motors because everybody's gonna say, what's this guy talking about? About the uh, thing with the Taj last night, what's going on? Why are we getting sued? What's going on? Who's suing us? What, 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 you know. I know that all these things are gonna, this video is gonna get shared around like wildfire. I'm already calling it now. It's gonna be a big view video right here. So, um, the point is, teach people about the tires and the 35, 36 PSI in the rain, how important it is. See ya.